A typical cryogenic freezer consists of a freezing chamber. The liquid cryogen is kept in an insulated pressure tank and there are pipes, valves and other fittings needed to bring that liquid cryogen to the freezing chamber and there are spray nozzles in the freezing chamber from which the liquid cryogen is discharged onto the product. The food product is conveyed on either a straight or a spiral belt that runs through the freezing chamber. When the cryogen comes into contact with the product, it converts from liquid to vapor state. In other words, it boils. And as a result, one gets very high rates of heat transfer. Liquid nitrogen has a boiling point of minus 196 degrees C. In other words, it converts from liquid to vapor at that low temperature. So when liquid nitrogen is discharged from a spray nozzle or when it comes in direct contact with the product itself, it boils. The cold vapors are then circulated onto the incoming product. One gets high rates of heat transfer coefficient because of the boiling on the product surface. Typical convective heat transfer coefficients in the range of 100 to 150 watts per square meter Kelvin are obtained in these types of freezers. Because of the high rate of heat transfer and fairly short freezing time, the dehydration losses are usually very small. For example, in a typical cryogenic freezer, uh, the dehydration losses are around 0.5% when compared with 1 to 8% in case of an air blast freezer. Quite often cryogenic freezers are used for surface freezing of the product also called crust freezing and then the product is conveyed to another freezer where freezing process is finished using another method of freezing such as an air blast freezer. If the final freezing is also carried out in the cryogenic freezer then in case of freezers that use liquid nitrogen, typically the liquid nitrogen consumption varies from 1 to 1.5 kilograms per kilogram of product. The investment costs are quite low, but the operating costs can be high because the cryogen, after it boils into vapor state, is lost into the atmosphere. It is common for highly seasonal products or products that are of fairly small size, such as shrimp, liquid nitrogen freezing can be economical. When carbon dioxide is used as a cryogen, uh, one should note that, that at atmospheric pressure, carbon dioxide exists either as a gas or a solid. A common method of using solid carbon dioxide is to mix solid carbon dioxide pellets with the food in a container to uh, freeze the product. In uh, cryogenic freezing, although the high rate of freezing should give us good quality, uh, care should be taken to avoid excessively high temperature gradients because that can lead to cracking of the food and thus actually impair the quality. And that is why, as we noted earlier, cold vapors that are generated from the boiling cryogen are circulated towards the inlet of the freezer chamber so that the product is pre-cooled to avoid the large temperature gradients during the freezing process.